Yeah, yeah, trick, yeah. Bullshit story time is back up in your body and your life. So prepare your system. Initiate BST protocols right motherfucking now. Oh, and the goddamn solar plexus. I got that PlayStation shirt. My girlfriend got me that. It's a Walmart exclusive. Uh, yeah, switched over to PS4 from Xbox One a uh, little while back and uh, totally pleased with it. It's a way better system, if only for the fact that you don't got to put double A batteries in your controller. Should have known this for years. I was gaming on Xbox One. Shit's trash. Anyway, now I'm repping that PlayStation. I'm on that bandwagon. Well, fuck. I got them gauges in my ears, marble, pure Peruvian marble up in them bitches, dropped about, hmm, about a thou on these bitches, dude, try me, I makes the cake. Psych the shit was bought on Amazon for like $10 along with like 20 other pairs of gauges. Anyway, we're going to hop right into this motherfucking shit right now and talk about a thing that very few of you probably know about, but some of you oil field trash surely do. And that little thing is called flow back, also known as flow testing wells. The man you see before you on this very screen used to do a little bit of that flow back, a little bit of that flow testing, motherfucker. Got that job. Got that fucking job. Best gig I've ever had. It was a ridiculously good money for very little work, which I'm all about. As little work as possible, or at least I was back then. So, flow back generally consists of going out and staying either in your vehicle or an RV uh, set out on the well site, and then checking the levels of the oil tank tanks every hour so you're really only doing about 12 minutes of work site like maybe about 20 minutes of work throughout a 12 hour shift because you just have to run out there drop a little fucking uh, measuring tape down into the tanks and gauge the oil and water levels super simple me and my motherfucking Faja used to do this shit, fool. I would run a 12-hour shift followed by his 12-hour shift. I usually did night shifts. So I was up all night gauging tanks, fool. And in between going out there, walking up the catwalk, engaging those tanks, I was sitting in an RV in some air conditioning or warmth. Just goofing off, fool. Just playing Xbox and shit. Not doing anything. Watching limitless movie marathons on DVDs, dude. Shit was unbelievably simple. I probably didn't deserve to have such a dope-ass easy job. But it did not last forever. But during the time that shit went on, uh, it was fucking tight. Shouts out to a homie named Yancey, who was our boss and got us the job. Also known as Yance in the pants, dude. Yancey went ham, dude. He was a cool guy. So we did work for him out on these wells, out in random locations in mostly the Jack County area. Shit was cool. Money was flowing in. Shit was going good. Had more money than I knew what to do with. Used a lot of it to put myself through Weatherford College, Harvard on the Hill. Yeah, got and associates pay for college by myself so i ain't in all this student debt that the rest of you ignorant motherfuckers are dealing with right now it took very little knowledge in order to perform this job all you had to do was know how to read and write and fucking operate a tape measure which was essentially a pulley with a brass weight attached to the end of it to help it drop down into them up fucking tanks yeah it was fucking super simple dude you didn't have to know shit but we were expected to know at least a little bit of stuff and it was sad that i never learned a goddamn thing dude don't care, didn't care, never caring, that's my fucking motto. Didn't care, was there for the fucking paycheck because I had brews to drink in school to go to. So yeah, didn't learn jack shit. But there was moments where shit would go wrong on the well, fool. Times when you would have to fucking adjust meters and gauges and shit by pulling levers in order to make shit work better. 
literally committed none of this to memory. Looked out across those whale sites, dude, at the whale head and at all this piping and tubing running from all different directions, having no idea what any of it was and having no fucking desire to learn or to fucking acquire any new knowledge about the oil field, dude. Anyway, yeah, there was different flows going down, different tubing all over the place and shit, and I would have to call up Yancey. Hello, yes, Yance in the pants. Um, the fucking oil level is at like three inches right now. It's not producing. We need some help over here. He talked about go out there to the fucking lever that's on the fucking side of the wellhead and turn it three quarter turn open and then you may solve your problem. Sometimes some gay sex juices would occur on this fucking well site, dude. And fucking shit would go wonky, dude. There would be a goddamn ratchet in the gears or whatever, dude. Shit would be fucked. So, we would have to go through troubleshooting with Yance in the pants on the phone. And try to figure out how to adjust things to get that well producing again. Because we knew that once that well stopped producing a significant amount of oil and shit. Or water from down in the hole. Like, then our job was gonna be over and we were gonna have to go home. And if you're not dim-witted in your brainstem, then you'll know that once you go home, that's essentially like punching clock. You don't get paid after that. Usually, we would stay out on these wells for like a week or so. Sometimes, I think there was one that we were out there for like a month. And the longer you were on the well, the more time you were getting paid. It was like an independent contractor type shit, dude. And uh, you just had to wait for jobs to come up in order if you were going to make any money. But there at the beginning, jobs were coming up left and right. I think, but I'm not sure, but I think that Yance in the Pants started to get fucking sick of the bullshit that was going on on Wells, dude. Because my ignorant dumb ass was out there fucking not knowing how to get Wells producing and not learning anything, dude, at all. So shit was going wrong sometimes. And sometimes Yancey would have to come out there to the job site and show me what to do. Shit was sad. I'm sure he was fucking sick of my ignorant ass not doing jack. Anyway, shit was fucking pretty tight, but uh, I was fucking shit up. It was sad. So uh, slowly the job stopped coming in. It wasn't Yancey's fault or my fault. It was just the fault of the oil field. You know, it's peaks and valleys and shit. And my dad would always say shit about shit tends to fluctuate, dude. Shit tends to fluctuate. Me and my brother still laugh about that because that fool said that all the time, dude. All the time. Shit tends to fluctuate. Anyway, shit was fluctuating, dude. And jobs were not coming in as much. But there was one job that we did in the winter time yancey god help him fucking put us on a well on christmas eve didn't really care I was more concerned about the great money i was gonna make doing it because i think it was time and a half i don't know maybe not but we were out there on christmas eve doing our thing dude on this particular job there was no rv there was no camper there was no mobile home or anything to fucking chill in nah we had to chill in my truck and you know that sitting out there for 24 plus hours in a fucking truck can get a little draining as well as draining on your battery and as well as you can't keep it idling for that gosh damn long because uh then it will fuck up your vehicle i don't know but it was cold in that bitch dude so we had blankets me and my brother mm. pretty sure that shit was a white christmas it was snowing dude it was icy we were trapped in a truck out in the middle of buttfuck Egypt, dude, watching a whale, dude, watching a fucking whale, sitting with no heat, with blankets bundled around us, dude, as the temperature neared three degrees, I believe. Yeah, shit was garbanzos, dude. It was fucking sad. We sat out there, bundled up in the goddamn truck with blankets upon blankets, wondering when we were going to get cut from the whale. This was one of those jobs where we hoped we wouldn't be on it much longer so that we could spend time with our relatives. Pulled in all nighter Christmas Eve like true OGs, dude. Me and my brother out there pulled in all nighter. Then we was there on the morning of Christmas Day, wondering if we would ever get to go home. Finally, Yance in the pants called up on their phone, talking about brr, brr, brr. picked it up. He was like, You can go. We were like, Oh, fuck yeah, dude. So we got out of there. We were freezing, dude. Frigid. 
another adventure with my brother on a fucking well filling in for my dad was that we went to a well site dude and this time instead of checking the well and shit we were gate watchers dude all we did was open and close the gate behind these fucking filling trucks coming out there to get oil and shit dude simple the simplest thing you could ever fucking do to make buku money dude we were just out there opening and closing gates and we thought it was fucking unbelievable that that was a real job and we were telling each other, dude, we need to start a fucking company called High Tech Gating, dude. Because this is some high tech fucking hardcore shit that you have to do out here. We can make it seem like the hardest job ever, dude. Hey, sadly, we never created high tech gating. Nah, we never went forward with it, but we had some things in the works, some prototypes and shit like that. But it never came to fruition. Anyway, yeah, so we did some high tech gating for a little bit, did some other whale sites, and one time we was out on one, dude, and had to pull us another all nighter. By the time the next morning rolled around, we were delirious as fuck and laughing about everything that was the stupidest shit ever, dude. Anyway, the pumper of the well came out there to take a gander at what had been going on. I think at this point we were working for somebody other than Yancey. I can't remember, dude. Lots of shit happened. There was lots of jobs and shit like that. But we were working for somebody different this time, I think. And the pumpers would come out there sometimes to just oversee and see what we were up to and stuff like that this time we met the man known as chanzy boy firstly we thought it was hilarious that this fool's name was chance sanders but it was chance with a z in order to make chance we were like that's the most ignorant dumb fucking retarded cock sucking bullshit we've ever heard so we had us a great laugh once that fool left and we started a fucking dialogue about a whole story about chancy's life Additionally, this fool was dim-witted in his brain stem. Yeah, and he came out there kind of trying to flex, and I think saying some shit about how, like, we were doing a bad job, implying it anyway. So when he left, we talked about how he was, like, flexing his knowledge about the oil field and about how little we gave a fuck about that shit, dude. So we were talking about that he was fucking... <laughs> <laughs> he was fucking born on a leap year, dude, on February 29th. Without a reason, probably because we were so delirious from pulling an all-nighter, we created this whole story about how that fool was born on a leap year, fool. And so he was actually only nine and three quarters years old. We came up with a little quote for Chansey Boy, and we imagined that fool walking up talking about, I'm nine and three quarters, but I'll whip your ass. I'll fucking whip your ass with your no knowing about the old field bullshit. The only way that you would find that funny is one of two things. Either you're delirious yourself because you've pulled an all-nighter, or you know about Chansey Boy. The shit was esoteric. You would have had to be there to understand why we found it so goddamn funny, dude. But it was hilarious. We created a whole fucking life story around Chansey Boy and died fucking laughing the whole way back after that fool had released us from the torments of that whale and about the torments of us fucking everything up and sucking. Basically, the entire collection of all the people we were affiliated with during this flowback that we were doing, all these oil field trash junkies, uh, yeah, they fucking probably knew that we did not give a fat flying fiddler's fuck about any of this flowback shit, dude, because we did a bad job. We should have been fired, but we were independent contractors, so we got to keep on doing it. And my brother was basically just subbing in for my dad to make a little extra dough. Anyway, dude, shit was fucking something else, man. It was good money, but fucking, I should have gave more fucks. Not that it would have made any fucking difference, suckers, because the oil field took a downturn. It fluctuated, dude. We fell into a valley that we never got out of because jobs stopped coming in, either by our own incompetence on the job or uh, just because the oil field sucks a fat, gnarly dick. Yeah, so it all came to a screeching halt and the money was done. But during the time I spent flow testing whales, shit was tight. So now I'm thinking about going out and getting oil field trash tatted on my eyelids now, dude. 
Maybe I'll get oil field down one side of my D piece and trash down the other side, dude. So these ladies know what's up whenever they whip out the cock. <laughs> Psych. Anyway, no, nah, eyelids. We're going with eyelids, dude. Anyway, I was oil field trash for a little bit, dude. And I was uh, trash accentuated to the ultimate levels, dude. Because I sucked and didn't try hard, dude. It was ultra tight, dude. Took for granted. But like I said, it wouldn't have mattered anyway because the oil field tends to fluctuate, dude. But it was pretty tight because in all that time I spent on well sites and shit, dude. I was studying for school. It put me through school, dude. It was tight. Now I have a fucking associate's degree in accounting. And guess what that degree has done for me in my life? Jack shit. Nothing. Looks kind of decent on a resume, but I don't give a fuck about accounting jobs and couldn't tell you a single thing about accounting. But that's a whole nother story. Anyway, the oil field flow testing provided me with some opportunities in my life. But uh, all in all, it, I would do it again for sure, dude. If somebody hit me up today like, you want to flow test or you want to do some high-tech gating out in these motherfucking rural areas, dude, I'd be like, fuck yeah, get me on right now but that ship did what ships do and it sailed yeah it's over with now but this shit is dedicated to yance up in them pants who fucking hooked us up with that job chansey boy for bringing us absolute hysterical laughter for no reason that he knows nothing about and also the fact that he turned out to be in a song dude on my song price to pay on the album isolating my brother has a spoken word rapping intro to that song dude and it references chansey boy many times an inside joke that you're not gonna laugh at but we find fucking hilarious so that's the story dude not exactly compelling or riveting in any way all that much but that's the story that i had queued up for you today like i've told you before if i hurt, held anything back and didn't tell you every peculiar story that happened in my life i wouldn't have enough content dude and i gotta keep dropping hot fresh content i gotta bring it to you hot and fresh so there you go pumping out content even if it's substandard so there you go that's the story and it's over and we're gonna sing the outro song sing along with me follow the bouncing ball goodbye